Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris Time, and today we're gonna to be talking about two things. First thing is my head unit just stopped working. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay just completely stopped working. Second thing, we're gonna be looking at wireless options for those 11th gen owners, because for those of you who don't have the 11th gen SIs, Sport Touring or Type R, it's either you have the lower trims or you're stuck with the 10th gen, which obviously doesn't have the wireless smartphone capabilities, then this video is for you. So stick around, I'm gonna show you guys some options. Let's go. I don't know if this ever happened to you guys, but recently, about a week ago, my Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on my car just stopped working completely. Uh, I even went to Apple and Samsung and bought an official cable from them and tried out the cables. It still didn't work. And that got me thinking, what the hell is going on with my head unit? So for about a week or so, I've been driving around using Bluetooth and Bluetooth is fine and all, but after you get in the car, start your engine, and like after about 15 seconds or so, Bluetooth cuts off. And for some reason, I have to go back on my audio settings, put the source on a different type of audio output, um, whether if it's FM, AM or whatever, anything but the Bluetooth and then change it back to Bluetooth. I had to do that every time I get in my car and it's super annoying and super inconvenient. So that got me thinking maybe the head unit was the issue because this head unit is a piece of crap, I'm not gonna lie. Even though this is a 2021, this feels like the head unit came from 2013. It's laggy, it's buggy, it's kind of small and um, it's just very slow response. And there's not much you can do with it. Uh, it, it it's just outdated. So in order for us to reset the head unit, all you have to do is go into your settings. Then you're gonna go under system. You're gonna scroll all the way down until you get to factory data reset. So you're gonna click that. Next. And yes. So basically this will restore your factory settings. Yes. On your head unit. So all your sound setting, all your phones that you have connected, it'll all be wiped and it'll basically start from fresh. Even your radio stations will, be, will all be wiped and you'd have to do a scan. So this is what it looks like. It says resetting the system to the original factory state. So it's gonna take a little bit, a uh, couple minutes maybe. System has been reset to factory state. Once it's done, just hit okay. And then it should like boot up again once reset your honda logo should appear just like this so once it boots up you're going to get your anti-theft system message so this is a message that you would get it's a very common message if you lose power to your vehicle like if you disconnect the battery um, so it's super simple all you have to do is basically just push and hold down the power button, which is this guy right here, for more than two seconds. You're gonna hear a beep, and then now it's fully reset. You just go in like usual. And then there you go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna be connecting a phone. In this case, it's my iPhone. See if this actually works now. So now it seems like it's reading the phone. Always enable. Um, no. So now we have Apple CarPlay back on. And, um, and now the car is finally reading my phone again. Let's try it with my Android. There you go, Android Auto now works. If you're like me, you ran into this issue and you don't know how to fix it, all you have to do is just reset your head unit. You do have to go in your settings and um, adjust them to your liking. Um, but that's just a minor inconvenience um, because once you reset your head unit, then everything should be fine. So yeah, that's how you reset your head unit and that's how you get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay back onto your head unit. So I have two devices here that I would like to test out. One box in particular came I think actually they're both from China. So uh, both of these devices came directly from China and sometimes China makes some good stuff for cheap. At first I thought they forgot to put the device inside because of how light it is because this literally weighs like nothing. My phone is like 10 times heavier than this actual box itself. 
In fact, my key fob or my keys for the Type R is heavier than this whole entire package. So this must be some really lightweight stuff. Um, and inside of this box, you know, they even packaged it with styrofoam and everything. This run right here is from Linky Fun. Uh, this is their CarPlay adapter box. And this basically uh, is a wireless Apple CarPlay adapter for your car. This is basically any car that doesn't have wireless um, Apple CarPlay. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox this. See if there's anything that's actually in here because again, it really feels like there's nothing inside. So let's go ahead and open this up. So here's a close up of the product. Has their logo, Linky Fun again. Apparently this is their fourth generation uh, adapter box. So um, this is my first time trying this device out from this company. Oh, that's it. Wow, this is tiny. And it's just like a U little USB drive. Um, wow, that's interesting. Usually it's like a little dongle. It's like a box with a dongle. But this one is just a USB. No cuts or anything. Um, that way, if this device is bugged um, with some sort of virus that'll mess up my car, then you guys will see it live. So I'm gonna do no cuts. I'm gonna take off my Apple cable, plug this device in. Wish me luck, guys. And I'm gonna start the car. So far, so good. Oh, look, it lights up. It lit yellow. And uh, something is happening on the screen. It's asking if we'd like to enable Apple CarPlay. Yes. We're gonna go ahead and connect our phone to this device. So it's asking us to pair Bluetooth Connect to AI Box BT. Okay. I don't see anything. Oh, here it is. So AI Box BT. So it's connecting. We're going to pair it. Allow. So in theory, this should be paired. So I guess let's wait. Okay, cool. So it works. Um, and it's an actual wireless Apple CarPlay device without any dongles. Um, let me see if there's any lag. I mean, that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it mid song. Pause. It's instantaneous. Look at this. Ready? Three, two, one, go. There's barely any lag with this thing. This possibly is the best wireless Apple CarPlay that I've ever tested it on a car before because it's nice and responsive. There's no lag whatsoever. And like everything works like it's supposed to. Like everywhere I'm clicking, it's there, there's like a half a second delay, which is exactly the same amount of time. Um, like if I had my phone plugged in, this is the same um, like response that I'm getting. I like this device. I think I might actually put this on my 10th gen instead of my wife's 11th gen. Now, I believe this is only for Apple CarPlay and not Android Auto, unfortunately. But this device, if you have an Apple iPhone, this is the one to get. And the best part about it is that there's no cables. It's literally just this USB that you plug in and it works and you don't even have to touch it. You don't have to worry about it. And it has, it has like a RGB light around it so it's also pretty cool um so i really like this device highly recommend let's see how long it takes to boot up so the car is completely turned off you get in your car you have this device plugged in we're going to start the car
So about 20 seconds. So here we have our next device. This device is from, I believe it's called the Karchi. Um, I might be pronouncing it wrong, but this is basically a link box. A uh, link box is a Android um, adapter that you plug in. But here's the unboxing first. This one's a lot heavier than our previous package. Uh, it has some good what heft to it. Uh, maybe the box is a little bit heavier and more high quality on this box. But as soon as you open it up, you have your instruction booklet. Oops. And yes, this is in English, so you'll be able to, able to understand. We have the device itself, which looks like this. It's your standard uh, Android box that you can plug into your car. Has some vents on the side for cooling. Take this plastic off. So there's more vents down here on the bottom. So there's vents everywhere uh, all throughout this device for cooling. And you can plug in a USB-A on this side. And then you plug in a USB-C on this side. This device does come with an adapter. So if your car has USB-C, it has an adapter for this cable right here. Plug this device in. So it looks like that. So it's just the box that you just, that you can store there, you know. Let's turn the car on to see what it looks like. So the car seems to be not reading it. Let's see. Oh, there it is. It just took a while for it to load, I guess. They have a pretty nice interface right here. Now it does take a while for it to boot up. It took about like a minute or so for it to boot up just now. Uh, maybe it's because it's the first time booting up. Uh, who knows, but we'll do that again later. Um, but like I said, pretty nice interface. I love how they have these tiles like this. Uh, let's go under apps, see what kind of apps you have. So you already have YouTube and Netflix installed. Uh, you also have an SD card reader, so you, you can read video and music. Let's see if it has any files. Oh, look at that. Right, let's get to work. So this device has the Fast and Furious trailer loaded. Let's see if there's any music files. So they have a couple of tracks available for you to choose from. This device does have Wi-Fi, you just have to connect it. Uh, let's see if my Wi-Fi actually... Yeah, my Wi-Fi unfortunately does not reach outside my house. So the only downside to this device it, is that it does take a while for you to set it up. Uh, right now I had to connect to Wi-Fi, log into my Google, and now I'm on the Google Play. I have to update YouTube because it didn't want to play any videos um, because the current version is the outdated version. So now I'm waiting for it to update. So I guess this device if, is for the people who have the patience. Connect your phone um, using this button right here, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You just have to connect via Bluetooth, whatever phone you want to use, whether if it's an Apple or Android. Okay, so it finally loaded. Now this one has substantially more lag than the device that we used earlier. So look. Pause it. Yeah, so. Yeah, so a lot more lag on this device. Uh, and look at that. Yeah, not so so smooth compared to the last device that we used. It feels like this device is going like 25 frames per second, whereas last one, it's like going 60 frames per second. Um, and like, look at that, see? 
you can literally see it lag. Hopefully you guys can see it on camera. Now, would I recommend these devices uh, for the 11th gen people? Uh, yeah, because sometimes when I go on really long road trips, uh, I just have the passenger figure this out. You know, I just put in my SIM card or use my phone as a hotspot uh, for this to connect to Wi-Fi, and then we can watch videos on the go. Uh, even though I don't suggest uh, you watching movies while you're driving, uh, this is more for like the passenger sort of thing. Like I said, it's not for everybody. Uh, it takes a while for it to boot up because it does a lot more than the Linky Fun. This one's a full-on Android tablet inside your car kind of experience. This one, Linky Fun, I do like better. It's just basically a thumb drive that you just connect to your car and um, no wires are getting in your way. It's not bulky at all. It's just this tiny little thing that you, you just connect and it has RGB features. So I really like this device. Anyways, guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button and comment down below what you guys think of this video. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I do make 10th gen and 11th gen Honda Civic content. So be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos. I usually post every week. Uh, anyways, thank you all for watching. This is Chris time. Peace out. Thank you.